Welcome back YouTube. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the apex for our current triangle because I've been getting a lot of questions about whether or not we can even go down from where we are currently and when can we expect that break, whether that's to the upside or to the downside. And so I have the apex of the current triangle in a pattern that we are in right now. The reason I didn't do this pattern sooner is because typically I like to have two tests um, either to the upside and definitely down, especially on the downside to establish that it's actually a trend or a pattern before I go out and say that, OK, I'm going to follow this triangle to see if we're going to get um, a, a follow through on it, because these patterns can be broken, obviously. So I like to have two tests, two bounces to make sure that it's something even worth uh, tracking. So now that we have that second bounce. I'm going to give you the data behind the apex here. So as of right now, we're actually getting our second bounce off of the um, support level here for this wedge. And we are pretty much expected to hit the apex around the 19th, 20th of June. So if all goes well, we should see uh, pretty much some flat movement, um, pretty much some bounces off of where we are now. So this 793 should actually be our low. Um, for the next week or so and we should see some pretty stagnant movement to go across until we get around that 20th mark now obviously a major catalyst big announcement or something like that can cause this uh, this pattern to be invalid but as of right now that's what we can expect we can expect actually roughly where we are now on um, the 0.793 if this pattern is going to be respected to be kind of like our bottom and we're going to see uh, some sideward sideways movement here but also it'll appear like we're, we're just consolidating in a very small range between like seven, nine, three, and I want to say like eight, one. So the low eight, high seven um, for the next week or so. And we should have that break no later than the 20th here for this uh, consolidation period. Obviously we'll have to track this to make sure that it doesn't appear that the, um, the pattern is going to be broken. But as of right now, that's what it's looking like. My second indicator and the reason I want to talk about this wedge here is you can see the yellow line. That's actually the 21 day moving average. And you can actually see it moving inside of the wedge and consolidating. So that's actually giving me uh, some pretty much some encouragement here that this is actually going to hold up and that we should see our break, whether that's up or down um, within this wedge here in particular, because typically the uh, the support isn't there. And if we're not seeing a bend in a 21 day moving average and we're just falling relatively quickly, this can indicate, OK, well, there's going to be uh, further consolidation relatively soon. But because we see the 21 day building out, this is giving us indication that, OK, this is the new trend here. And this is something that we need to pay attention to. So I'm actually talking about this uh, this yellow line here that we see actually bending and consolidating inside of the wedge. So this is really um, like another I say cross reference for me to believe that this has a really great chance of playing out. Now, in addition to the actual wedge here, I do want to point out that we have seen some severe spikes when it comes to the actual short positions on the coin. And we've seen some spikes over the last couple of days, but it's looking like we are actually building up to kind of have um, that next ladder up. So we've seen we're actually well above the 200 day moving average. We have the 21 day, the 72 day. And they're all curving and it looks like they're getting ready to do a cross uh, of the 200 day, which is the red line here. And we're seeing it's, it's coming into fruition that this is going to be potentially setting us up for another higher high in the actual shorts. And this is what I believe um, is going to happen as the coin consolidates. And if we especially if we get a break to the downside, we're going to see the short positions actually increase, because at that point, that's technically the direction that they want it to go. But when you do this, you're going to have to kind of keep that pressure on because we've seen the pools of liquidity. Um, when I go over it, like in book map, you're able to see the buy orders and stuff that are sitting. Dogecoin has been trending pretty much relatively in the pool of liquidity. Um, so when you have these uh, these orders, you'll see these bounces um, similar to what we did today. We got a bounce to like the uh, mid sevens or something, and then we pop right back up because those buy orders executed. So these shorts here, they're going to, especially if they want to see a breakdown or if they want to contain the price, we're going to have to see um, further increases in this um, in these short positions. So expect that 200 day moving average to actually curve here over the next few days if they're going to stay in this position. And with the current market and the way things are looking, I'm actually OK with Dogecoin building up this additional support um, around like the six to eight cent range, um, just because if we are headed toward a uh, further we're going to get some of the CPI numbers and stuff here within like the next week. And we're going to get an idea of like inflation and how to handle that stuff. But if we're due to further slide into the recession and this is going to further squeeze the markets for liquidity, 
these um, these floors, these foundations, these support levels, this is going to do wonders for us in the next bull cycle. So I'm actually uh, really fine that we're setting these trends here and building up these support as the market is consolidating, really. And I do want to remind everyone, if we do get the breakdown to the, the downside, I'm going to switch back to the um, other chart here. If we do get the break, this is an indication that in addition to the shorts, we're going to see the buy orders and the pretty much the consumer support really just take a turn here because i do believe that everyone has like that magic number that okay well or there's always people on the sidelines saying that okay well i'm just waiting to see if it's going to go down lower then i'll buy some uh, some coins and stuff like that we're pretty much within that range where a lot of the i won't say the super early but early investors were buying last year including myself, most of my most of my Dogecoin to this day has been purchased at around five cents. Yes, I have some at like two cents, stuff like that. But the majority, the bulk is around five cents. So there's a lot of us who that if we did get that breakdown there, it's going to be like right on par to where we were. And you can best believe that there's going to be a lot of investors who are comfortable um, making larger entries at that point. I can't speak for everyone. I know that I typically just buy a little um, as we get these consolidations these breaks down because I don't try and time the market. But when you start aligning with your DCA that you were over a thousand percent in and stuff like that, you're a lot more comfortable making entries at that point. And certainly blow it at that point, you just go bananas, but um, you're a lot more comfortable buying at your current DCA. So I do expect there to be some strong, strong resistance at around that five cent mark if we were to get a break to the, um, the downside. But again, that looks like that's about um, 10 or so days, 10 plus days out. If this, if this triangle plays out all the way. And I do want to say that I know that in addition to the consolidation points and you know when do I think we're going to get a breakdown, a breakup in the coin and stuff like that, this is, we have to uh, always keep in mind that we have to keep track of the macros as well. And we have data that's coming out, like the CPI numbers and uh, pretty much how we're doing with inflation. And this is really going to play a part in the liquidity of the market. Because if they say something like, okay, well, Obviously, inflation is still getting away from us. It's time for us to raise interest rates again. This is going to have an effect on the market. You can bet you can best believe that this is going to further sh shock the market here, and you're going to see a lot of money moving around. So this can play a factor here and literally change the dynamics. I prefer to come on here and give you like factual information and things that you can look at to kind of get an idea of like price action versus doing like a lot of like charting and saying that, oh, okay, well, this wedge here, big pump and big pump coming and stuff like that, because there's so many different factors that's going on right now that can literally spook the market. Because right now, the market in general, and I'll go ahead and say this, we're skating on thin ice. And this has nothing to do with, in particular, with Dogecoin. This is much bigger than Dogecoin. But crypto market, stock market, uh, real estate, housing market, like everything here is, is a mass, massive, massive uncertainty. So um, anything like these um, in, uh, interest rates continuously rising is going to cause additional panic. Inflation continuously rising is going to cause additional panic. And when you have additional panic, yeah, the cryptocurrency market, yeah, you can make a lot of money. But um, as far as for speculation and returns and investment, these institutions are still view the crypto market as a speculative investment. So they're going to if they have to pull money from somewhere and say, OK, well, we either keep our Bitcoin, Ethereum and, you know, whatever is that else is in their portfolio or we're going to double down on Amazon or Apple or simply just wait until we get further consolidation. We know which one of them they're going to sell first, because the yes, you can say that these are hedges and stuff like that in, in the future. But as of right now, they're not producing cash flow for these companies. Capital gains is great, but cash flow is still king. And this is why we see that in a down market, well, really it is in any market, but this is why we have to keep an eye on, especially in coins like Dogecoin and stuff like that, keep an eye on shorts because they're going to try and make up for that revenue of them having to pull out of the market some kind of way. And typically they do that with the whole magic short thing and taking these, uh, and, you know, injecting these fake sell orders into the market to influence price direction. So. This is why we have to keep an eye on macros and the full spectrum of investments. I hope that makes sense. So keep an eye on June 20th for, uh, from now until June 20th for the apex of this wedge. I hope this video finds you well. You can support the channel for free by liking this video and subscribing to the channel that does wonders for the channel's growth and for us reaching more people. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. And until next time.